was here right now, he would poke me in the, the, the side and say, this, this isn't for me, this can't be for me. He gave everything and asked for nothing in return. And people say, oh, that's what everyone says. That was Chris. Chris would do anything he could for anybody. I was very proud he was a police officer too. Can you talk about the morale for you and your officers since all this has happened? How's everyone doing? It's been tough. I would not lie to you. We are a very small agency of 16 people. Very family oriented. Um, Chris was a part of the family. Um, he started here three years ago. And um, young kid, 31 years old. Overwhelming, and I hate to keep saying that word, but that's what it is. I've had calls from all over the United States. A governor called me. Uh, it's just been overwhelming, and the, the community has really reached out. We've been had food delivered almost every day, and um, it's just been a groundswell of support from the community, from government, from everyone. I mean, it, it almost saddens me that it took something like this to, for all of us to have to come together. Can you talk about what it means to you to have the governor and the lieutenant governor here in attendance today to show their support and remembrance of Officer Donald? I'll tell you a quick story, and you feel free to cut this if you'd like. A couple of days ago, I got a phone call. It said, personal call. And I'd been getting lots of calls from lots of people. Um, anyway, I looked at it, and I said, well, if I want to answer this. I don't know who this is. Personal call. Who is this? So I picked up the phone. I, you know, Chief Russell, Wintergreen PD, how can I help you? Chief, this is Governor Young. Governors don't call me. I'm a small town police chief in a small town. But he did. And that really meant a lot to me. Um, so I am. I'm overwhelmed. And I'll keep using that word that so many people have just been amazing. It's going to take a while. I was telling Corinne that I've been in law enforcement for 39 years. Started in Florida, retired, came up here, thought I would be retired, but got back into law enforcement. It's going to take a while for all of us to heal, but that's what Chris wanted. I guarantee you, I've had many heart-to-hearts with that young lad. We'll get better. Can you talk about how his family is doing? pretty much attached to the hip. We try to do that for the family because they're much in, as much in the dark as, as we are. Um, so I've got to know his father very well. And you'll hear today if you remain, and I hope you do remain for the service, um, a lot of his dad, a lot of what I've seen in Chris, I've seen in his dad, in the way he talks, his mannerisms, his, his little quirks, quirks, whatever you want to call them. So, um, I met his father um, Saturday morning on the 20, um, I'm sorry, on the 17th of June at 3.05 a.m. to deliver the, the next of kin notes. And he was shocked. I'm sure he was probably a lot more emotions than that. You don't want to get that knock at, in the morning. And you're surrounded by cops, so you know when your family member is a police officer, it's not good. Because why would the chief of police be standing at your door at 3 o'clock in the morning? His dad knew why I was there. Can you tell us a little bit? Now, don't you? Chris was a very young officer. He'd been with us for three years. And he wanted the midnight shift. When I interviewed him for the first time to become a police officer, he said, 
I would like the midnight shift. And I don't know if you know this or not, but that is the most difficult shift to fill because nobody wants to work at midnight to six in the morning. You've got family, you, you've got a life, and even young officers have lives. And he told me, he said, I want midnight shift. And we're very happy when someone comes in and says they're willing to do that. And he did. He worked the midnight shift for three years. Actually, he had come to me about two weeks ago and asked if he could go to a different shift, and we were in the process of moving him to another shift. He was going to go to the evening shift. Uh, but Chris liked it. He, he enjoyed working midnights. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know everything that you're, you're wanting me to say about Chris. Um, Any idea why he wanted to work the midnight shift? I will say that today. We used to kid. Um, he was my taser instructor. He was my bowler wrap instructor. Um, and whenever I would call him into work, he'd come to work with these thick, thick sunglasses. I mean, you couldn't see him. I am. Because he didn't like daylight. That was his choice. He wanted the nights. I don't think it was because that's the action. I don't believe that. I think that's where he wanted to start. That's where he wanted to start. What um, happens next for everyone? We're going to heal. We're going to get together because we are family, and we're going to talk it out, we're going to hug it out, we're going to do what Chris wants us to do, and that's to remember him, to honor him, and to cherish the sacrifice he made. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. No, don't apologize. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. watching the ABC 13 YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos and live coverage and local stories, click to subscribe and download our ABC 13 News app.